Welcome to the DLR webcast. So that's what you are seeing here is the Spaceliner concept. And Spaceliner is the visionary passenger transport, hypersonic passenger transport, ultra fast concept flying from Australia to Europe in 90 minutes or from uh, uh, Europe to the west coast of America in one hour. Well, that's possible by using rocket propulsion or space technology. It's uh, lifting off like a space shuttle vertically by two stages. The stages are separated after a couple of minutes and after less than 10 minutes we have a burnout of the passenger stage and afterwards this passenger stage is in a very fast hypersonic Mach 20 gliding flight up to its destination. Well, this is a point-to-point um, -point travel uh, uh, vehicle for point-to-point -point travel on Earth, but it could be, of course, also developed later to an orbital vehicle reaching space and staying in space with less payload and maybe transporting satellites also at a very affordable price. But uh, the main application and the largest market, what we think, is point-to-point -point travel on intercontinental destinations on Earth. So currently we are in a research phase and we hope to develop this project in the next decades and so we hope to fly it before the year of 2050. What you are see here is a quadrocopter. It's a new experiment of the DLR School Lab in Berlin and we invite pupils to get for one day into the School Lab and make some experiments out of the research areas of the German Aerospace Center. One example for the DLR use of octocopters uh, is the civil defense and uh, for search and rescue missions and so on. So they developed quadrocopters with different sensors, with different cameras, infrared, visible and, and radar. What I'm exhibiting here is a so-called droop nose system and it's a high lift system for an aircraft with a contradiction to normal sled systems which have gaps which are producing a lot of noise and uh, affect the boundary layer and we have here a morphing structure as you can see here which does not have any gaps which produces the same effect as a normal sled. DLR is involved in the development in the, of the skin of the structure and there is especially the Institute of Composite Structures and Adaptive Systems. A second partner is EADS Innovation Works who made the kinematics within the wing and our third partner, the Tsagi from Russia, are just performing wind tunnel tests in Moscow with a five meter wingspan demonstrator for flow analysis. And the application of this system is to generate a high lift for the aircraft and this is especially needed in takeoff and landing so that we can use a lower takeoff and landing speed and therefore we are just changing the, the camber of the wing for uh, allowing lower approach and takeoff speeds and this in the other extent uh, allows us to reduce the noise and fuel consumption within cruise flight. We are exhibiting our um, research on aerogels, which is developed at the Institute of Material Physics in Space at Cologne DLR. We are working on aerogels because it is a very interesting material that is very light and has a nanoporous structure which allows us to make materials that are, have a low thermal conductivity and be very light. I can show you here the work we do in cooperation with the DLR Institute of Vehicle Concept in Stuttgart. We work on um, composite material of aerogels with alumnia and this material has a very good um, properties and which allows to have a fresh absorption in a much higher range than other um, materials are used for. This um, experiment is showing the difference in the suiting propensity between a crude oil kerosene, classical Jet A1 kerosene, and a synthetic um, gas to liquid kerosene, which has been produced from natural gas 
um, in regions where there is too much natural gas and which is usually wasted in flares. Um, this is now processed um, and it can, the, the process is producing a synthetical um, kerosene or diesel, uh, whatever you like. Um, and in the case of kerosene, we are testing uh, the uh, suiting propensity in this uh, experiment. And we can compare the two um, fuels with respect to the, the suiting propensity here. Well, the uh, Institute of Combustion Technology in Stuttgart has mainly um, the task to uh, test uh, the combustion properties of different fuels, of different new fuels, synthetic fuels, fuels from biogenic sources, which are processed to um, a status where they can be used as a kerosene-like like fuel. Especially we are testing um, ignition delay time, we're testing, the, we're testing the, the flame velocity, but also we are more complex experiments are doing tests, for instance, for altitude relight uh, conditions and how the, the new fuel is behaving under those those conditions relevant to certification processes. Thank you. This was a DLR webcast.